I'm Andrew Bergen and we're standing here in a, a field of wheat on our farm just outside of Thai in South County Kildare. So it's, this is a, an all arable farm, so we grow wheat, barley, oats, peas, oilseed rape, anything we can put through a combine here. I was a pretty typical farmer for most of my career. The move towards regenerative farming where you're starting to pay a lot more attention to what's, what's happening in the fields and in the soil was probably the start of this and uh, just becoming aware of what's going on and the, the importance of the diversity in the field for, you know, not, not just for nature and the environment but actually for my crops as well. Five years ago we put in our first grass margins around fields as part of the DLOS scheme. It was called their arable grass margins and you could take between three and six metres of a margin around a, an arable field, put it down to grasses, old grasses, mainly Coxfoot and Timothy, and meant the, the regime for maintaining it, there was no, no pesticides, no fertilisers, and cut once a year. We've been very happy with the diversity that's come into these margins over the last five years because there's most of the plants here obviously we, we didn't sow so there's, there's been a huge amount of stuff for pollinators has come into them. It's a sort of a, a cliched headline but the difference that small changes on the farm can make. My name is James Kelly, I'm a tillage farmer farm with my two brothers and um, live here in Rockfield Farm at Thai with um, my wife Sharon and my daughter Martha. We joined the scheme principally to um, see how we could enhance the um, wildlife even to a greater extent than we're doing at present even. We've created a wildlife area here and we planted lots of different species of trees. We try and encourage uh, pollinators to frequent the area as much as possible. Uh, it's a natural meadow. Uh, it doesn't receive any, um, any fertilizers or uh, pesticides. We let it grow naturally, cut it once a year. It's a haven for pollinators, moths and uh, bees. When we walk through the area via those pathways. It's, uh, it's very calming and quite beautiful actually this time of the year. This is cell peel and clover. We have lots of it because we don't spray it with chemicals. This is catmint. The bees love it. We see them on it every day. This is a water bowl. The bees and birds share it. If you want to try this, make sure you put some stones and sticks in for the bees to get a drink safely. Mullen, dog daisy and wild cart are great for pollinators. My name is Jenny and my, myself and my husband Peter, we've got a fairly large dairy herd, 350 cows. At the moment they are grazing in one of our clover pastures. About 15 years ago we started planting more and more clover on the farm. Um, it fixes nitrogen and it's, it's, it's good, a good source of feed for the cows. As well as, as planting clover, We've moved the field boundaries out a metre and a half and this allows um, bumblebees and solitary bees to have, uh, to have more natural habitat to feed and on a nest in. We also have areas of bare soil that will fence off so the cows can't, can't get at them but that solitary bees will um, nest in there. The farm is where we work but also where we live so it's important to have kind of um, a good balance of biodiversity as well as, as commercial farming. Um, it's enjoyable and it's interesting when you go on a farm walk when you're getting cows you see you see a little bit more nature than, than, than you might have if you didn't do these things. My name is Kim McCall, 
We have a, a good sized farm, it's about 200 acres, and we produce um, pedigree Albright cattle, and um, about, we have about 30 to 40 ewes. I don't think there's a specific area I've set aside for pollinators. I would count the whole farm as an area for pollinators, and I think it's up to me to be able to farm within that and to organize my grazing strategically that I allow flowers to be there at the same time as the cattle. The ground that we're on at the moment hasn't been ploughed or reseeded in 70, 80, could even be 100 years, and all the grasses, all the clovers, all the flowers would be native or um, certainly not sown in living memory. The dandelion would probably be the first major flower that comes up. Um, and is brilliant for the pollinators. It's, it's great, it's a calcium gatherer, it's, um, it breaks up compaction, uh, and it's, it's, it's a great nutritional feed for the, for the cattle, so they will graze it. Certainly in the springtime when we're just, maybe not quite as much grass, it'll be a three day rotation um, on, each, on each field. But as the, as the grazing season progresses, we go to a two-day rotation and we halve the paddocks from eight acres to four acres. Cows, calves thrive on it. They go back in calf and really that's what we intend to do. I think Hawthorne is very important because A, it's, it's shelter. If it's let grow to a reasonable height, uh, I have just let that grow to up to 30 feet in places. It flowers brilliantly in that May-June period full of different types of bees, different types of um, hoverflies and various other pollinators. Most of the hedgerows or tree lines on the farm would be double fenced, uh, which excludes the stock um, and then allows whatever wants to come up, be it new, new trees, new hedge plants, or as I said before, the flowers. And the last couple of years we've actually planted uh, two hedges, each of 200 metres each, um, broken up into, into four separate pieces across a field, uh, leaving a good wide gap for the various machinery that needs to go through it and cows that need to go through it. But the new hedges would be comprised of up to 22 different types of um, trees and, and hedging plants. Uh, roses, spindle, uh, various viburnums, with a few oak, uh, hornbeam, field maple, um, and really to provide a diversity of plants, diversity of heights, diversity of widths, up to six, six trees per, per meter, then we walk away. We don't do any maintenance after that. You can't plant an ecosystem, an ecosystem has to evolve. <laughs>